Hey everybody, welcome to ASG Astronomy. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about the new photon cage and how it relates to the Raza 11 specifically. Uh, we have an introductory video, kind of talks about both the Raza 8 and the Raza 11, um, but we're going to do separate videos just specific for the Raza 8 and one just specific for the 11. So if you're looking for those, check them out on our website. Uh, this one I want to talk specifically about how the uh, photon cage can work with this system. Uh, it's a pretty powerful little modular device if you haven't seen the photon cage. Um, what we did is we tried to incorporate um, some really key uh, adjustments to it, uh, including having a filter slider, a tilt device, and a back focus adjustment system uh, all within your camera and taking up very little back space. Uh, we, we tried to create a modular system so that we can use this and just put it on a Raza 8, but when you maybe upgrade to an 11 or switch scopes, or even go to a refractor or an SCT, uh, we want something that you can take with you. Um, and so we try to create it as modular as possible. So let's take a look just at the 11 and some of the kind of unique uh, aspects that it has. Uh, first off, um, the recommended spacing uh, for this is uh, 72.8. I got my little fifth grade cutouts here to kind of simplify things, but that's the figure that Celestron recommends. Uh, it should note though that they recommend it could be within plus or minus one millimeter. And back focus is going to be really critical on a device like this. You're going to see stars either start to, to comet around into a swirl. Uh, you're going to see them start to comet in. Um, it just depends on where your back focus is, if it's too far or too little. Uh, you're going to see corner stars get out of control, and it's really, really sensitive to that. The other thing it's really sensitive to is actual tilt, and those two things are very different. Uh, the back focus is a matter of pulling that camera out and in so that your sensor gets to that perfect point for curvature. Uh, tilt, on the other hand, is if you imagine uh, let's just take a piece of paper like this, and let's say this is your camera sensor. Tilt is a matter of it tilting around and not being completely perpendicular to the optical surface coming out of the Raza. Celestron recommends 0 0.01 degrees. That's pretty flat. Um, so you're going to have to have something, uh, in our opinion, that really allows you to tilt. You can be off that much just by simply the thread screwing into maybe spacers. And so without a device like this, you're really kind of stuck with just screwing in stuff in your optical train and hoping it's perpendicular. And in a lot of cases, it's not. Um, you'll also notice that some camera manufacturers, you know, they say that their, their backspacing of the sensor is 6.5 or 12.5. But they also say that could be fudged a little bit by 0.5 plus or minus millimeters. So I think back focus is going to be different for everyone because you in inject filter sliders, uh, depending on which filters you use, uh, which camera you have, manufacturer, which spacers you use. It's going to be something you're going to want to adjust, which is that back focus. Okay. So we try to make a modular system that offers three things in it. Okay, so let's take a look at what else we offer. Um, starting right off with your mounts. Uh, we wanted something that uses the stock mount plates. Um, I don't want to have to mess with the optical system here. Um, and I really don't mind these. Uh, that way I can move my scope if I want to and pull off my stuff easily. Uh, you'll notice they come with 42, which is pretty in, pretty narrow, especially for a big scope like this. Most people are going to jump up to bigger framed uh, cameras, bigger sensor cameras. So this is 42. Uh, Celestron also gives you a 48, uh, which opens up a little bit more. Um, we offer a custom one, which is 54. And so you get even more opening here on the scope side. Now, talking about the, how, how important this is, um, we have to understand how the light comes off of the, the scope. Now F2, that 
cone is really steep. In fact, I've got a little drawing here, or a little little mock-up, uh, fifth grade draw, uh, piece of paper again. Uh, this is representative of a light cone. The light comes in and has to go down into focus at a certain point. And they recommend at 72.8 mils. So we're trying to get that. Let's say this is your sensor. That's what's going to get you those really sharp stars is when you get that right in perfect focus and at the perfect back focus distance. Um, and then the light cone comes out the other side. Now, if you're off focus, you can see your stars are going to get bigger either which way you go. And this also holds true for tilt on a device. So you may be in focus right in the middle of your sensor, but if you put it out in the corner and you're tilted, you may be out of focus. And what you get is aberrations or stars in the corner that look elongated, they look stretched, they look like a swirl, all kinds of bad things. And so we're looking for that perfectly flat system to happen right at our perfect back focus based on our system. So what we do, um, let's take a look at that. When we go to a 54, what we're doing is we're making sure we're not obstructing the light right here at the optics. Okay? Uh, yes, a 48, for example, that will cover a full frame sensor if light came straight through, but it doesn't. Okay? Light goes through at a cone. And if it gets into an obstruction, especially in the corners, okay, you're going to have a little bit of vignetting. So we try to open that up a little bit with our custom adapter. Okay, uh, If you have a full frame or you want all that light, open it up. Let it breathe a little bit. It's more critical that there's, there's on this side no obstruction than it is on the other side. Uh, you might say, well, you use 48 millimeter filters. Okay. So why not just use a 48 millimeter adapter? And that's the reason, because the filters are going to go in here right next to that sensor. Okay, And so the light's already been, um, it's already been put into focus at this point. Back here, it's still at a pretty big cone, and you're going to get obstruction. So jumping up on a, on a Raza 11 to a 54 makes sense. And it will still work with your two-inch uh, filters. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the other parts here. Uh, as we move from our holder, all of these are going to have 17.8 in terms of actual optical terrain. Um, let's jump up here to our system. Our system with a filter slider and a tilter are always going to take up 18. If you look at a camera, the camera depends. Uh, if you use a small camera, a small body camera, they're usually about six and a half millimeters. Okay? And if that's the case, I'm using a small camera, then we're going to try to accommodate about 30 mils of accessories in this point. And so we like to use these. They come off of Vagina Astro. They're just, for example, uh, different spacers. You can buy a set of them from three mil to ten mil. Um, you can also buy rotators. Uh, example here, I'm going to go ahead and take up 30 mils with two spacers and a rotator. And so you can kind of come up with a combination that works best for you. Uh, you can use just straight spacers if you don't want to have a rotator. Uh, again, you're just trying to take up that 30 mils. In total, you're going to end up about 72.3. Okay, That puts you a little under their recommended uh, 72.8. And that's fine. That's what we're looking to do. We're looking to be just under back focus because then we can adjust it with our system. Okay? I'd rather be a little under than a little over. Now, in the other scenario is you jump to a big body camera. Okay? Uh, these are your 6200s full frame sensors. This is probably going to be more realistic of what people use and match up with their Raza 11. Uh, in that case, those typically have a back focus uh, of about 12 and a half millimeters. And so you have to adjust your accessories in this point to be about 24. And that's easy to do. Uh, again, I like to buy this little pack of, of uh, uh, 
of spacers that you can get on a Gene Astro for 54s, and then I can put whatever combination I need um, in spacers. I can redo what's in front of or after my rotator. I'm just going to shoot for this 24. I could even shoot for 23 and a half or even 23. Um, that's not super critical because I can easily grab my device and pull the back focus up. Um, you can see on here we've got the four corner tilting down lower and these are precision uh, tilters because it's a little bit more sensitive um, but you can see we're going to tilt our device near the actual sensor plane and they're all engraved here so you can see which ones are tilt which is this level and then up here we have our back focus adjustment and these are just three it's not quite as sensitive um, because it's just kind of a one to one ratio here but we can just start pulling the camera we just simply undo our clamp ring uh, and we start grabbing our back focus pull it out and then we can just tighten our clamp ring back down and so you know, if you just get an equal space through here of, say, an extra half a mil, then you're going to be spot on with that 72.8. And at that point, you can start taking pictures and you can start adjusting using some software um, to get that good back focus. Once you have back focus kind of dialed in, then we kind of move down to tilting and move that around. Um, so that's how it works. Um, it works with the big body cameras or the little body cameras, it just is going to be something that you adjust right here in your accessory train, uh, maybe 24, maybe 30, it just depends on your needs and exactly what you do. Okay. Um, again, if you do jump up, you can see this is an example of full frame sensor. Okay. The, uh, the filter sliders are going to be here close to it, and so they're going to easily cover that space. For vignetting, you won't really get any at that point. Uh, it'll be close, but you're at least covering it because you're near the sensor. Okay. At the other end, again, we really recommend jumping up to something like a 54. That's going to give you room for that light cone to get through there and uh, actually come into focus, especially in the corners on a full framer. Okay. Um, some other things about our Raza 11. Uh, this is your lock ring. Uh, it's about 114 millimeters and our system is only about 110. So if you're wondering if this is going to obstruct your light path, uh, it won't. Uh, we actually are less than the lock ring itself. Uh, so obstructions aren't really critical. I know Celestron says you can go up to about 125 mils before you really start to see or lose effect. Um, so you got some room there to grow, but just know that we are underneath that, um, even the lock ring size, which is a good benefit. We tried to make it as tight as possible. We also give you <coughs> some uh, cable management recesses here, and this allows you to, you know, strap your cables to it and really try to tuck them in tight. You can, you can, you know, use rubber bands or, or Velcro, whatever you use to get your, your, uh, your cable guides in there. And so we give you a lot of recesses and grooves to do that on the device. <clears throat> um, again, uh, if, if you haven't seen the Photon Cage, uh, we also offer a lot of accessories, whether it be uh, all 3D printed filter sliders. Uh, we also offer uh, full CNC machined filter sliders, if you like that route. Um, I, I like the CNC's. They're a little more precise. I also like to engrave them like this so that you can have actual filter names on top of your filter sliders. Uh, it makes it really nice in the dark um, when you're trying to identify what you have in there. Uh, I can just look real quick and see that I got sulfur in there uh, without having to pull it out, try to hunt down the, the actual label on the filter. Okay. So that's our, that's our Raza. 11 system. Uh, it's a little bit easier to work with than the 8 just because again you have this extra spacing right here uh, to add accessories to. So any questions check out our website at asgastronomy.com. Um, we're going to have again some videos on there really talking about the software side and how to tilt, how to do back focus. Um, there's some really neat tools coming out for that um, and 
If you're looking for any of these things, let us know or email us. Uh, so thanks again for watching.